Hey guys, welcome back to Topher Drives and welcome to the 2023 Toyota Supra with a six speed manual. We're out here just outside of Hocking Hills, Ohio. The Topher and I have been driving the Supra around for about four days and I wanted to take you guys for a drive and talk about what it's been like to live with this brand new iteration of the Supra. It's about eight in the morning, so excuse me for sounding a bit groggy, but this is probably the only time you'll ever see a sunrise video on the Topher Drives channel. Thanks to uh, the Topher over here likes to get things done very early in the morning, but it allows us for some unique lighting today. So we'll look at it that way. This Supra is finished in Stratosphere. We've got these new wheels available on the manual transmission car. And let's go ahead and get you guys a cold start because it's been sitting all night. Be able to see what this thing sounds like. You can see our manual transmission here. I'm gonna turn this on, put us in sport mode for the loudest cold start possible. So we're gonna start out with some chill driving this morning, let this thing warm up. We should go through some twisty roads, we'll get you some spirited driving, and then we'll get out on the highway and we'll talk about what this thing has been like to live with this week, and if the new Supra with a six-speed manual is a good car to road trip. The Topher's got his Civic Type R out here. I've done a bit of driving in that as well, and that is quite a fabulous thing, so. There he is, the man himself. I was just telling them this is the earliest they'll ever see a video from me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sunrise. That's right. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we've been staying out at this cabin out here for the last few days, and the setting is great. I was like set on starting my video from right here today because it's like one of the most beautiful places ever. The sunrise or the sunset last night was insane. I'll show you guys the practicality here. I've got all of my stuff. Because of course the Supra is a lift back. Got plenty of room back here, honestly. And the only downside is things slide around a bit if the car is not completely full. But as you can see, I've got my suitcase, backpack, I've got some shoes back here. And honestly, a trip for two, you'd probably be just fine fitting everything in here. The only downside of that is you can only open it from the key fob or a button inside the car. Oh man, I should have had all my heated elements going in here. It's a little chilly. <laughs> so the only real difference you'll notice in here with the uh, manual transmission car is that you have an shifter here, as you can see. Kind of a unique look to this because the shift boot is stitched all the way up to the knob. And then you just have your little gear counter here um, on top. Otherwise, everything is stitched in leather. And of course, no paddle shifters. We also have white stitching on the steering wheel. Not entirely sure if that's unique to this manual car. It does look quite nice. Just pretty simple black interior in this thing, nothing special. I love the 90s style subwoofers that we have behind the seats there. Proper for a Supra. Okay. So, also, under the hood of this car, we have the 3 liter B58 Turbo inline six. This is the same motor that you'll get in any 3 liter Supra, automatic or manual. The manual is not available with the four cylinder Supra. You can only get it if you go proper with the B58, which is 100% what I would recommend anyways. I've spent a little bit of time with the four-cylinder Supra, and I wasn't the biggest fan. I just don't really think it's worth it in the end. If you're going to go with the Supra, you may as well just go with the three-liter. So we're going to hang out here behind the Topher as he gets our navigation ready to head on back to Michigan, saying goodbye to our little cabin in the woods. We had a little bit of a boy's escape and uh, it's nice to just kind of hang out and chill for a few days. For 2023, it feels like they've done a couple of tweaks to make this thing handle just all that better. It's a little bit less tail happy. It's a little bit more dialed in in the corners and overall it feels great. Clutch and shifter action, honestly, it's just about what I was expecting because of course, this is a BMW engine. You know, everyone can film their super video and say, oh, well, actually, this is a BMW. 
but this has been tweaked a little bit to feel more unique to a Toyota. So this shifter actually feels a little bit notchier than one you'd get on a BMW, say an M3, M4, um, like an S58 powered car. It feels like an in-between of a BMW shifter and the shifter on the new GR Corolla, which if you're unfamiliar with that, it's quite a great notchy shifter. So they did a pretty good job with this. It's still a little bit rubbery and, and gooey, but it gives you just enough feel uh, to know what gear you're in. So no real confusion there. The shift knob itself is pretty small. It feels, feels pretty small in the hand. The clutch is great, super easy to drive. Gear shift assistant will just rev match for you, which I like to do. I'm not the best at heel towing yet. My mentor up here has been teaching me uh, the ways. But as far as today's video goes, it's not even 8 a.m. yet. Wow, I thought it was 8 a.m. It's not 8 a.m. yet, so guess what? We're going to go to sport, or wait, no, 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 vehicle settings. Configure sport individual, gear shift assistant on. As you can see also, we've got our sport mode set up for normal damping and normal steering. So all sport mode does is sharpen up our throttle response and open that exhaust valve. We're gonna hang out in normal mode for a second here while the car warms up. We've got a really cool covered bridge up here. If you guys have never been to Hocking Hills, I certainly recommend three to four day trip. You can come out here, hike some trails, see all the scenery. I didn't know that Ohio was capable of being pretty like this because this is Ohio. Whenever people think of Ohio, they just think of a flat wasteland of nothingness, but it's actually quite cool. Granted, this is mostly to West Virginia at this point. All right, covered bridge in the manual super, here we go. Let's try to scrape this front end. I actually got quite a bit of ground clearance on this Supra. We've done some steep driveways with this thing and it has not scraped. through all the gears here and it's a pretty relaxing experience when you don't want to drive fast and that's an important characteristic of a grand touring car of a car that you would be able to take on a road trip this car doesn't necessarily encourage you to drive it quickly when you're just doing normal things and of course we have somebody going in front of us that's nice it's another Honda Civic a white one I'm seeing double And as you can see, there's super easy clutch action getting off the line. There's a bit of rev hang when you're actually really going for it. It's a lot easier to drive this car smoothly at lower speeds than it is at higher speeds. We're actually getting warmed up already, so let's switch over to sport mode here. As you can hear, it opens up that exhaust valve. And you do get some subtle burbles on the down rev they're not so subtle when you're up around 6,000 RPM. They pop quite loud. <laughs> yeah, this thing makes a really good noise from that uh, three liter turbo in line six. It's a real sweetheart of a motor. It feels quite nice in this car as well. Honestly, this thing feels pretty underrated as far as power goes. They claim 382 horsepower, 368 pound-feet of torque. Uh, but it feels like it makes that to the wheels, so they've got to be underrating it somewhere. You also seem to get some more unique turbo noises and blow-off sounds with this manual car. Of course, you can play with that a bit more. It's a skylight over there. That's cool. <laughs> it is boost weather in Ohio, and somebody's already having a fire at 8 in the morning. Oh, no, they're not. That's just heating elements, I think. So we've got a pretty quick steering rack here on the Supra. You don't have to give it a ton of input. Yeah, the ride
height is also quite impressive. You saw that elevation change back there. And when you've got the damping in normal, this thing is pretty cozy. Gear shift assistant doing a great job there. Apologies for all of the things shifting back there. Also got my phone right here. I could probably do a better job tucking that in. There we go. <laughs> That's the noise I like. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about that is it's not to the point where every time you let off it's doing all of those things but when you're in the high revs and you want to hear something like that it's got that for you all right we're actually going to run this road back up uphill which is more fun anyways let the tow first set us a pace here in the Civic Type R. Great job keeping me in line there. It's pretty nipply out still, so I gotta keep that in mind. handles itself is so impressive. It's got such a short wheelbase, it just scurries around corners. God, and it's so quick. You can just pull yourself out with all that torque. It pulls so hard. There's no way this car only has 380 horsepower. I mean, it just feels like so much more. <laughs> yes, what a thing, what a thing. Sun goes up over Southern Ohio. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit more driving here, um, get out to the highway, and then we'll talk about what this thing has been like to actually live with. We'll talk about how cozy it is on the highway, and then we'll wrap it up for you guys. Okay, we've got the Supra settled down, back into normal mode. Getting ready to hit the highway here. Of course, when the Topher sees an entrance ramp, he does that.
All right, hanging out here on the highway, no crazy adaptive cruise, lane keep, any sort of driver assist technology like that. All we have, and the only thing we have, is cruise control, regular old cruise control. It's right here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, very easy to use, but um, that's it. <laughs> so uh, if you're one of those people that relies on lane keep assist and all of the driver aids like that, the manual Supra may not be the car for you, or in fact, any Supra. I don't really think you can have any of that on any Supra. So just keep that in mind. And this isn't a car that's gonna be all over the road. You don't have to chase it around while you're driving it or anything crazy. So in that respect, it really doesn't matter too much. And you can't really fault a car like the Supra for not having a ton of driver aid technology because you don't want all of that interfering when you're doing your spirited driving. Sure, you can go in and disable all of it, but I don't mind in a car like this. So it's not a complaint. I'm just telling you all that that's one thing you have to consider if you are going to road trip this car. One other thing, we are on a set of Michelin Pilot Super Sports, which are a bit of an older tire. Um, I don't know of any other new cars that still have these. Usually you can get like the Pilot Sport 4S. Um, but they're a little bit on the noisier side, but they do a great job. When you're on the back roads you saw back there, they have a ton of traction for what they are. So, you know, it's a trade-off, but Driving down this road is a little bit of a louder road surface. It's not horribly loud. You all can observe that. Also, since the Supra is super aerodynamic, you don't have a ton of wind intrusion. It's a pretty quiet cabin. Also, we have this JBL sound system in here, which sounds like it's been retuned. It sounds quite nice, and I, I should play you all a demo of a song here. Oh, stand by. Okay, I'm playing you the classic, uh, the Topher sound system test song because it's copyright free. So here, take a listen. It sounds pretty dang good for a car in this class with the real estate they've been able to work with in this tiny little cocooned cabin. They've done a pretty dang good job. And you know, it's not the hardest hitting sound system. It's not the crispiest sound system, but for what it is, I have actually quite enjoyed it for this trip. So it's another plus is the JBL sound system. So let's talk about something I actually just touched on, which is the hardest thing for me with the Supra, and that is the cocoon-like cabin in this car. It is a little bit claustrophobic in here, especially with all of the dark materials. You've got black everywhere. You can get a lighter colored interior on the Supra, but your headliner stays black. A lot of the other aspects of this interior stay black. You get some tan on your steering wheel and you get tan seats. Or if you want red, you can get red on the steering wheel and red seats, which either of them are great choices. They both look fantastic. But the Supra is, you have to expect that of course in a tiny car like this, but it almost takes it to the next level with just being very dark and cramped feeling in here. I do have enough space, you know, I, I don't feel like Physically, I don't feel like I'm super big for this car. But if you're considering one of these, go and sit in it. Don't just buy it online from Carvana or something. Go and sit in it, go and drive it, and make sure that it's gonna work out for you. But one of my buddies uh, had one of these cars and he road tripped it all over the place and had no problems with it. So with that being said, I honestly think this could be a decent grand touring car for somebody that wanted to drive out somewhere four hours away, like Hocking Hills with, uh, as Topher and I did, drive it spiritedly and then drive it home. It's been a lot better of an experience than I was expecting and the Supra has been quite a bit easier to live with than uh, I was even anticipating. I'm sure the Topher will give you some uh, road trip impressions on the Civic Type R, so make sure you head over to his channel as I'm sure you all already have. I'm sure that's how you're all here on my channel, so. Um, well, thank you all so much for watching. That's gonna wrap it up for us today. We're just gonna end it here on the highway. I'm gonna try and catch back up to him here. Uh, but comment down below what you think of the manual Supra if you have any questions. I may end up shooting another video on this car here in a couple of weeks because uh, Charlie and I will have this car for our daily motor channel. So I'll have another week with it here shortly. But that'll wrap it up for today. Again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.